Hello everyone, Chocolate Bird here, but not for a video review, this time it's for episode 14 of Look Back. Yeah, episode 14, craggy. But yeah, those of you who don't know, might not have seen it before, it's where I look back at um, basically things I reviewed a year ago and five years ago, and see just whether um, the ratings I gave them hold up, or whether you know, there's anything that's disappeared, basically. Probably not likely over a year, but um, five years ago there's a chance. Um, yeah, but who knows, maybe a year as well. But yeah, so it's basically just to go over um, old reviews and um, yeah, talk about whether I still agree with them or not, basically. Um, yeah, so quite an interesting one. So links for all my reviews are in the description, by the way. It's probably, um, let's say, a link's appeared on the screen or a message on the screen saying this as well, probably in this corner here, maybe. Um, but yeah, basically, all the reviews I did, all the links for them are in the description. So um, after you've uh, watched this, go check them out if you were fancy seeing what I actually said in full. Before I forget, I did a couple of special things a year ago. I did a two member reviews, uh, Maltese's Spread and uh, Frosty Small's Pop Tarts. Yeah, so the link for those are in the description. Um, so if you are a member, um, check those out if you want to. If you're interested in becoming a member, check out the link in the description. I might have tried to remember to put a link up here, but I might have forgot. But the link will be in the description or probably up there at some point anyway. Um, yeah, so you can check those out. So I suppose get an exclusive review every week. Um, yeah, so there's about, I think there's quite a lot now, 50 plus maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, quite a lot there if you fancy. And all different things as well. So check that out if you're interested. It really would help support the channel as well. And also the Ultimate Chocolate Bubbly Showdown as well. Link for that's in the description where I compare, I think it was Aero, Milk of Bubbly and uh, Cabbage Whisper as well. So yeah, I did a sort of freeway showdown. So go check that out, link for that's in the description as well. So still relevant, still interesting to watch as well. <laughs> yes, the first one is, um, yes, uh, Niederegger Orange Marzipan Bar. Yeah, I think it was, um, it wasn't dark chocolate or milk chocolate, I don't think. It was like a strange, I don't know what it was called now, but uh, yeah, interesting chocolates anyway. Um, yeah, this was recommended by Dark Hot Tea or requested, um, well, both really, uh, for the Found Subscriber Special. Um, I'm quite sure it was, that was for the event. Um, yeah, so I've seen you for ages, by the way, uh, Dark Hot Tea. So if you're still around, uh, yeah, leave a like or, a, well, leave a comment so I know it's you. <laughs> but leave a like as well. Um, but yeah, this bar, unfortunately, um, I didn't really think too much of it. Really. I gave it a two out of five, basically. Um, yeah, I mean, it, did fit, sort of, it wasn't very orangey and I wasn't too keen on the chocolate, basically. And I must say that I'm not a massive marzipan, you know, in chocolate fan. I know some people are really, obviously Dark Horse Hero was, and Steve Jones as well in the comments mentions it quite a lot as well. Um, but it just felt that really that there wasn't enough orange taste to it and I wasn't too keen on the chocolate. So even if, you know, it wasn't just the marzipan side of it, and I gave it a two out of five and I think that was really reflecting, you know, not really, I think I would have given it that anyway, regardless of the marzipan situation. Because like, it's not that I don't, you know, it's not that I can't like it, it's just I'm not um, enamoured by the concept, but it's not that, you know, I don't like marzipan or, you know, wouldn't like some marzipan bars if they were done just to my taste, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, this one, as I say, just didn't quite work for me, and it wasn't just the marzipan, it was just a few things about it just weren't right for me. So two out of five. So yeah, I think that's I think that rating was about right, basically. But um, obviously, if you are a marzipan fan, um, let's say like our Dark Arterial uh, is, presumably, um, you know, I think it is one of his favourite bars. So there you go. So it's worth checking out, really. And they do a lot of different um, marzipan bars as well, Niederegger. So I'll check them out. I think they're an Austrian, Austrian company. Um, yeah, I almost said Australian and Austrian. <laughs> um, yeah, so check them out. You know, let's say if you like marzipan chocolate. I think um, I had to get them online, I think. But you might might be able to find them in uh, places like Aldi, uh, maybe a little. But I had to get them online, I think. So, yeah, look out for them. <laughs> but yeah, two out of five, still the same. Now what do we have? Yes, I had, um, yeah, Milka Raspberry Jaffa Cakes. Yeah, so... I gave these um, four out of five, really, and it's basically, you know, to be honest with you, I think I might drop this one to three out of five. I just, it's milk chocolate, it's like a Jaffa cake, basically, obviously raspberry. Um, I didn't think it was as nice as the orange ones. Um, but I think for me, the problem was the milk chocolate. I don't think it quite worked as well as I initially thought, and I've changed my mind on it a bit, really, having had them again since. And I think milk chocolate on the Jaffa cake just doesn't quite work as well for me um, as dark chocolate. So, yeah, I think I'll lower it to three and a half out of five, maybe a three, but I think... Mm. Yeah, I think maybe a three actually. I think I'll lower it to a three. I think I think three and a half might. You know, it's it's, boy, it's close to three and a half. I think, but I'm, I don't know. I just don't think it quite worked for me. And I think um, yeah, the raspberry ones weren't quite as good as the orange ones. So yeah, I think I might have had the orange ones in last week's look back as well. Well, last fortnight's look back. Um, yeah, so basically, I just don't think it quite worked for me. So I think three out of five. Yeah, I lowered that one as well. Really. So yeah, mm, bit of a shame. But I say when I first had them, I was quite enamoured. But I don't know. Did just I just. Yeah, wasn't too sure after a while, so, yeah, fail to five for those ones. Mm. And what else do we have? Um, yes, Cadbury's Bourneville Dark Chocolate Fingers. Yeah, no, I believe it or not, I gave it a four and a half out of five. I was very surprised by this, actually, because I really didn't think they'd be up to much at all. Um, but I really liked them. I just felt like, cause the problem with um, Cadbury's Fingers generally is that um, the, so, the chocolate layer is so thin on them, um, and it's just so much biscuit that they're just a bit average, really, you know, and, uh, but... 
and you can't really sort of taste the chocolate. But in this case, because it was dark chocolate, or, you know, I, I know there's some contention about uh, <laughs> just whether uh, Bourneville is dark chocolate. Or not. I mean, you know, yeah, so that notwithstanding. Um, it, it was it was very nice, and I just felt it was quite distinct, and you could really get the, the benefit of the of what actually fingers should be, and I really like them, actually. So, um, yeah, I think I'll stick with that. I don't think they were quite, you know, they didn't quite, you know, blow my socks off you know, any more than that, which is why I didn't get a five, but it was very close to being a five, and I think, um, yeah, so I think I still have four and a half out of five, but I'd say very impressed, I really thought they worked, and I think they just had a lot of chocolatey goodness, chocolatey flavour to them, which is otherwise generally missing from uh, Cadbury's fingers, I find, so yeah, four and a half out of five, yeah, recommended. Mm -hmm. Now what do we have? We had, um, yeah, Reason Dark Chocolate Chewy Toffees, and uh, now I got these ones, because basically, as we'll find out in a minute, I was also going to review the, um, Cadbury Bourneville Chocotoffs. Um, yeah, another Bourneville one actually around this time. And I gave these reason ones, um, what did I give them? A three, three and a half out of five, basically. And I thought they were just pretty chewy, but the chocolate wasn't too great. They were just a nice chew, quite chocolatey, and dark chocolate as well. Um, yeah, so quite a, yeah, they're quite nice, quite chewy, um, but nothing, you know, amazing. But, you know, just, um, they were just good enough. Yeah, and I think that's probably about right, really. Nice chew. A bit of a, sort of like a toffee, chocolate toffee, basically. Um, I thought it was quite nice, the fact that it was chocolatey. Um, but I'd say just quite chewy. I don't know. Yeah, it does what it says, really. It does what you think it would be. It's, it's a chewy toffee, uh, chocolate flavoured. And yeah, but it's not going to sort of blow your socks off. But 3.5 out of 5 is still a pretty good mark. I think it does um, does a good job. It's above average. Um, yeah, not too bad. But we'll see how it compares to uh, <laughs> the uh, Cabby Borville chocolate toffee, which will come to uh, one after the next one, I think it is. Um, Yes, yeah, so after that I did the milk of bubbly alpine milk. Yeah, so basically sort of, yeah, sort of Cad um, sort of milker's response to, um, you know, Cadbury's whisper, sort of really, or Cadbury's bubbly as it was, you know, so I think they've got rid of that now. So it's like, it wasn't too bad actually. What did I give it? I gave it um, three, you gave it a four out of five, I gave it. Yeah, so I think, I mean, that's probably about right really. I quite, I, I was expecting not really to like it. I don't know, well, not to love it really, or to basically give it to a three out of five, but it was actually pretty good. I felt... I felt like it was just quite smooth. It's quite the chocolate worked well with it. Milk and chocolate actually was pretty good in that bubbly format. I wasn't. I always had a bit of reservations about milk and luffly, you know, or, or, you know um, before when I had it with the caramel version and just and just a big luffly bars anyway. But this bubbly one, even though it's I guess the same, it somehow just worked. I don't know. It just seems to. I don't know if it's a size or what or whether it's just a different. You know, I don't know. Um, something more alpine -y about this one rather than the regular milk and luffly i'm not sure but something about it just seemed to really work and uh, i don't know maybe i'll say it could have been the size segments or something you know i'm not sure but yeah i liked it four out of five yeah i was impressed this time so you can't, probably milk and luffly probably won't be too much different but i don't know it just when I mean, i've had those bars they've been quite big bars of milk and luffly in the past which really is bubbly basically so it's not you wouldn't have would have thought it'd be the same thing but for some reason this one just really sort of yeah Seemed to sort of stand out a bit better, so four out of five. Yeah, I think that's probably all right, really. Now, we did do the Cadbury Bonneville Chocotoffs, yeah. So, <laughs> now I gave these ones, what did I give them? I gave these a free, actually. And I, I basically preferred the Reason ones, which have been around for years, Reasons, by the way. Um, a bit, remind me a bit of Werther's Originals, just that sort of old school, you know, um, sort of long lasting sort of chocolate brand that you never really see much around anymore. Well, you can see Werther's a bit more, but yeah, Reason used to be advertised on TV and things, but not, don't really see it anymore. Very strange colour scheme as well, that sort of like yellow and sort of brown, you know, yellow writing with a brown background. Well, um, so yeah, the Bonneville Chocotops, basically similar to those, but they were so hard, they were a lot chewier, and um, I just thought they were too chewy, really, and I didn't think the chocolate was much better, you know, than Reasons at all. I just thought the Reasons were better, they were just a bit softer, but still had a really good chew to them, so it's not like they weren't chewy at all, it's just that the Chocotops were so much chewier. But so I still gave them a free, um, yeah, I think that's probably about right in relation to the, um, to the Reasons, really, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, they were just, you know, I don't know. I don't, I think basically I would always have reasons above them. So there you go. Yeah. But they were still nice, but they just weren't as good. There's just, just a better product out there. There's just, there's a better product. So why would you ever have them in my opinion? Unless you really like something really hard and chewy. All right, and what else do we have? Yes, we had, uh, yeah, the Lind Lindor Caramel. Yeah, these ones, um, yeah, very disappointed with these. I gave them a two and a half out of five. Basically, it's Lindor, but caramel. I think it might, I don't think it's salty caramel. It's just caramel. And I thought they were going to be like a Lindor ball. You know, those, you know, Lind, you know what Lind, Lindors are. Those sort of like um, balls with like a truffle in the middle. A very sort of creamy, chocolatey centre anyway. Um, and I thought this would have basically a caramel centre. I thought, wow, this sounds really interesting. You know, but it was just, it was just caramel flavoured 
like that creamy chocolatey center you know and it's just and they're just too sickly for me those things and it, but on the front of it, it looked like it had caramel inside the middle you know i'm sure on the on the graphic um on the picture on the front it had caramel in the middle um but it just seemed like totally false advertising really it just wasn't what i thought it was at all i thought it's gonna be really different and nice and interesting but it just wasn't it was yeah it's just the same as all the others but not a great caramel taste i don't think that was even good yeah um you know the caramel didn't even taste the flavoring didn't even taste that good and it wasn't what it was meant to be or seemed to be advertised to be um it's disappointing so i'm not a big fan of full-size lindors either um because they're just a bit too sickly for me. I prefer the, sort of the mini Lindors, which are the small ones in small balls, about that big. And I find the proportions for those are just a lot better. It just works so much better. Um, yeah, so, you know, there we go. Um, yeah, an interesting one, but there we are. There we are. But yeah, two and a half out of two. It's probably a bit too... I don't know. Hmm. I think I might lower that one to a two, actually, you know. I think a two is probably about right, really. For that. Just just below average. I think, I think two and a half is just... Yeah. It's not really two and a half. It's a two, I think, that one. But actually, if you love Lindor's, it might be more for you, but I still think you'd be disappointed. You know, yeah, but there we are. For me, two out of five. Mm. Then what do we have? We have the uh, Dairy Milk Jingly Bells Chocolate Noisette. This is the brown one. So basically, there's, there's two Jingly Bells. Well, maybe three, actually. I think there's a white chocolate one this year. But there was a Noisette one, um, Pesel Cream. I think they got the white chocolate one as well. And somewhere in between those is like uh, yeah, the sort of like the little robins I think of various types. Um, a bit like the puds, these ones. I see this one's a sort of purple wrapper with a brown band on the top. The one of the others has green, I think, which is the uh, hazelnut cream. Um, and yeah, and, the, and they say the white chocolate is just white, so it's completely different, really. But yeah, these ones actually, I really like these. Ones. I was expecting not to like them at all because it's like you know, sort of noisette. I've seen it all before. It's, I think it's a hazelnut flavored one. Um, but I gave it four and a half out of five. Yeah, and I thought. Um, Really like these ones actually. I just felt the texture was so nice. It just had a weird, almost fudge like textures in like Cadbury's fudge, but just something I don't know, but a mix between that and a typical sort of noisette, truffley type scent. It had just like a, a a bit of give to it. I don't know, it was a very different texture. Yeah, and I liked it. I thought it really grew on me, and I really liked it actually. I really recommend these ones. Yeah, just a bit interesting. Um, yeah, four and a half out of five. I think that's about right, really. And I say it's something I wouldn't really normally have been bothered about at all. I probably would have just pass them by really but um no i was very impressed it just the texture of them was just just nice and just distinct and very different um yeah i enjoyed them a lot so hmm yeah one out of five yeah but the uh but the other ones the uh jingle bells hazelnut cream the green sort of labeled ones i say they're purple mainly but with green at the top these are dairy milk by the way so dairy milk uh jingly bells um yeah yeah these are three and a half out of five because these were just more typical these were just basically what I expected the other ones to be, you know, these are the Noisette ones, I say, well, these are the hazelnut cream ones, and the Noisette one was quite nice, but, um, yeah, the hazelnut cream one, it was just a bit more mundane, um, it's just not as good as the other one, I just don't, there's no reason to buy this one, I think the, I feel like the puds are probably this sort of thing, um, which, I don't know, which I know people like, I think Emily Misty was saying she liked, uh, yeah, I like the puds, and I didn't mind them, but I think the, the as I say, the Noisette one of the Jingle Bells is where it's at for me, the brown um, sort, of label, sort of bannered one, um, yeah. These ones, three and a half out of five. I say I need to try the putty and review them properly, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I feel like um, I feel like I've predicted what I'm going to give them there. <laughs> but yeah, three and a half out of five for these ones. So there we go. And then we had the Kit Kat Hazelnut Spread. Yeah, so I thought this was like, this is basically a normal Kit Kat. Um, I think it comes in a pack of 10 or 9 or 8 or something of two-fingered Kit Kats. Now, I seem to recall this one not being that great, but I was thinking of, I think, the... Um, um, what was it? Which one was it? The um, oh, what's it called? Honeycomb one, I think. The hazelnut spread one, actually, I thought was quite nice in the end, and I gave it a four out of five. And I said it's basically like um, um, yeah, hazelnut butter rather than hazelnut spread. Yeah, it didn't just taste like Nutella, basically. It tasted, it tasted like yeah, say peanut butter. Well, it tastes like peanut butter but with hazelnut instead. So it had that sort of interesting sort of consistency and taste that wasn't just as a Nutella. And I, I quite liked them in the end. I was very surprised. I expected it just to taste like Nutella and be a bit boring, a bit like a sort of bueno sort of but um it's a bit more kit catty but no very impressed and four out of five yeah so i have to try them again because i i couldn't remember i thought i i had it in my head that they weren't that great but they actually yeah when looking back at the review i quite like them so keep that on the same four out of five i think i need to have them again basically because i dismissed them completely but um yeah so i still see them around um yeah I'd give them a try very different so here's not spread pretty much give them a try <laughs> not not to nutella at all really well i mean obviously it's this hazelnut not to an extent but um you know, not in the same way that Nutella does. So yeah, interesting one, those ones. Yeah, and I quite like her Kit Kats with peanut butter in. Um, they work very well. So hazelnut, uh, hazelnut butter or similar 
concept is uh, not bad. But as I say, I think I probably would always go for the peanut butter one, which is probably why it's just a four. But still, um, still enjoyed it. Mm, give that a try. Yeah, four out of five. Mm. <laughs> and finally, four year ago, it had the uh, yeah the Cadbury's Dairy Milk Freddo Treasures. Yes, this was basically a sort of giant treasure box. Um, not giant, but a big sort of box that looks like a treasure chest, and you flip it open. It has a bit of Cadbury motif on the front, and it's quite a good. Really. It's like a gift set for sort of I guess for Christmas. Um, I'm not sure when you could have it any time really. It was like a little plastic Freddo figure, some stickers, um, you know, and like about four packs, I think, of mini buttons, I think it is. Um, yeah, regular buttons, but mini packs of buttons. Um, so it's quite interesting really. And uh, I just thought it was a really nice, so it wasn't too expensive. And I think the, the treasure chest is pretty good. You could, you, you know, kids could really sort of have a lot of fun with it. You know, you could use it as a sort of proper pirate's treasure chest or something like that. I don't know, kids would have fun with that. And I think the toy was reasonably good. It had like these, you know, um, Stickers on it and things. I think there was two toys actually, I'm not sure, maybe just one. But it's just quite interesting. It wasn't an amazing toy or anything, but it was alright, it was good enough. And um yeah, I gave these a five out of five. I just thought it just worked really well. It just felt like a substantial product and it, you know, the treasure chest was good, the toy was okay, you know. Um so it came with some stickers, so it's quite good interactions for kids. And uh, yeah, the dairy milk buttons in. I thought it was pretty good. I don't know if you can get them anymore, the big size ones. Um there was a silver one as well, which I'll probably do next time and look back. Um which is white chocolate buttons. Um, well, you can get these mini, you could get the sort of mini Freddo chests. I don't know if you can still get them as well, but they were something at one point. I think they just had like the toy in and maybe a couple of buttons in, something like that, which we you know. But this sort of big chest one, it was like a metal chest, as I say, really, you know, good. It would just be a good toy for kids in in itself, really. Um, you know, it was good. Yeah, it was just a good part. I'd say five out of five for a good product for kids. It'd be a good little mini present, really. Something nice for them to have. And I think they'd get a lot of joy out of it, you know, just playing with it and things. And um, I say, as a product, so it is just basically... You know, Cadbury's sort of buttons, the small buttons in it, about four packs of them or something. It's not worth the money for just those. Um, but they are nice, you know. I think, as I say, as a little chocolatey gift, you know, based on what you get and the play value and things for kids, I think it's pretty good, really. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's a five out of five for that one. I think that's probably about right. So, yeah. Yeah. A good one. Interesting. <laughs> Right, so what did I review five years ago? Well, basically, I did a lot of um, classics five years ago and M&Ms as well. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting one, really. Um, yeah, I did Mars Bar, basically. Um, yeah, so, you know, I need to probably re-review these classic ones again, really. It's been such a long time, as I say, I've not reviewed them, I don't think, since then. You know, it's been quite interesting to go back on them. But I think the scores will probably would say the same, really, as we'll probably find out. Um, I gave Mars Bar three out of five. Um, and I think that's probably, yeah, I think I can't really argue with that. It's, it is... The quintessential middle of the road bar. I prefer them refrigerated Mars bars. I think they just taste a lot better refrigerated. I don't know why the the nougat sort of sense sort of clogs in my throat slightly a bit. You know, um, yeah, basically. But when refrigerated, I don't know it becomes a bit more chewy and a bit more enjoyable. So I do prefer them refrigerated. I do recommend that. I think still probably three out of five refrigerated. I don't think it really enhances the score much. But you know, um, yeah, Mars bar. It is what it is. I think we all know what it is. It's quite a typical bar. Yeah, it seems to just be one of those where. Even though it's not very exciting, it stays around. People presumably just must buy it. It's a bit like ready salted crisps and things. It's not the most exciting flavour, but they just work. Um, you know, it's so fair enough, I think. It's just one of those that, you know, you, you can probably always have room for a Mars bar, can't you, really? So it's one of them. Um, but yeah, 3 out of 5, I think that's pretty much about right. I also reviewed Snickers as well, and I gave that a 3 out of 5. And again, for the same reasons, um, it's pretty much a Mars bar, except the new guy's slightly different, and um, it's got peanuts in it. And I actually quite like, I've, at the time, I think I said that I preferred Mars bars, but you know what, I think I might prefer Snickers now. Um, it's still a 3 out of 5, as I say, but uh, yeah, I quite like, I don't know, I'm not a big peanut person, but Snickers, I don't know, the Nougat, and it just all works together. And as I said, I quite like that sort of different Nougat taste. It just, I don't know, something about it. And refrigerated as well as where it's at with Snickers. They just give you even a bigger extra chew, you know. Um, hmm, that's a bit longer. It's, they're both quite small bars now, though. I mean, they're, you know, really tiny, um, which is a bit, you know, ridiculous, really. But um, there we go. It used to be quite big back in the day. You could get king size bars. Although nowadays you just get the double ones, don't you? I think that was the interesting thing, really, where they banned king size bars. So companies just released duo bars where it was just two of them together. <laughs> You know what I mean? Ridiculous, that, isn't it? But there we go. Um, but yeah, yeah, three out of five. I think that's about right, really. Um, you know, it, they are the sort of the quintessential average bars, but they are. I definitely, as I say, there's always room for them. For some reason, sometimes you just crave one of them, and they're uh, they're always there for you. So there we go. <laughs> what else did I do? Bounty. Well, I did uh, review these together. Bounty and Bounty Dark. I reviewed them at the same time. Um, basically, I gave them both a three out of five. But I said the Bounty Dark one. I don't know. It's sort of. 
not sure if it worked for me because I, I it meant you could taste more of the uh, more of the sort of coconut um, rather than the chocolate which you could in the milk chocolate. So the milk chocolate one was a bit more about the chocolate, whereas the dark chocolate one I found was a bit more about the coconut. And not being a massive coconut fan, I preferred the milk chocolate one. I might have to re-review these at some point because I feel like um, I feel that might have changed now. I'm not sure, and I feel I don't know. Yeah, interesting one. Um, I gave them a three out of five, giving them the benefit of the doubt with the fact that they were, you know coconut bars and people would like them. I don't think they're really for me coconut generally. I think they're probably probably a two out of five for me. But nonetheless, I think, you know, I was understanding the fact that, you know, people like coconut and they do deliver on coconut really. And, and suppose I don't yeah. I think I was giving them you know, I was they're not really for me, but um, you know, it wasn't sort of I was thinking, well, you know, they do what they do, um and they do it well. So that's why I gave them three out of five. But Interesting one, yeah. I feel like I might need to revisit those ones because I feel like maybe the the roles will be reversed and the dark one might prefer, but mm, interesting, yeah. Interesting one. Right, then we had a few, yeah, start of a few um, M&M's ones here. Oh, US imports, by the way. So I think it must, I think we went to a convention and they were selling lots of US chocolates, I think. So first we had the uh, US M&M's chocolate bar, yeah, and they gave this one um, three out of five. Similar to the one we have in the UK. Now, I don't think we had the UK one there at the time, but it's actually a lot better. I'll say it's similar. It was a similar concept, but it was a lot smaller. It's like a regular size bar rather than the big one that you get. Although well, you can get regular size bars for the M&M's chocolate bars now in the UK, but at the time you couldn't. Well, until recently you couldn't. Um, yeah, so an interesting one. I think I think they had full size M and M's in it though. You know, the UK one has mini M and M's. I feel like these might have been full size ones, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I tried to see if I could make it out. Um, interesting one though. Yeah, it was. Um, it, I think basically for me, I sort of thought it was. You know, it was okay basically. And I guess I say gave it three out of five. Um, just thought basically, you know, the chocolate wasn't the best, um, but it didn't really benefit too much from the crunch. And I just kind of felt a bit like I'd just rather have some M and M's. You know, than the, the, the chocolate ones. Um, so yeah. It was all right though, but yeah, you know. But again, I said the UK one, maybe I rate that a bit higher nowadays. But I said that's usually with the big chunkier ones, so I'm not sure. But I, do, I don't like the fact that it's mini M and M's in the UK one. I say this one looked like it was full size M and M's, but I could be wrong on that because um, it was still quite a small bar. But the M and M's in them looked quite big, so I'm not sure about that one. But yeah, I think a three out of five is probably about right for that. Yeah. Now I did the uh, yes um, mega M and M's as well from US sort of giant M and M's, and we do have them. Um, Giant Skittles in the UK. Um, I think they don't have them in the US. I'm getting quite a lot of US viewers watching that review. <laughs> but um, but we don't have uh, giant um, yeah, M&Ms in the UK, so that's a shame. These ones I thought were really nice, actually. Um, but I still gave them just a three and a half out of five. But I just thought they were really good. And, and the size sort of enhanced them, really. Just because you got just a bit more of a... I don't know, something about them just a bit more interesting. They all went a bit similar to... You know, a bit bigger than Minstrels. You know, they sort of had that same sort of feel to them. I don't know, something a bit special. But obviously the chocolate wasn't quite as great. Um which was why it's only really a three and a half out of five. But I felt the size was I don't know, just gave that extra crunch and made them a bit more substantial and it worked. So yeah, three and a half out of five. I think that was probably about right really. Mm. Yeah. Then I reviewed um crispy M M's. This is basically the same as the UK ones pretty much. And I gave them three out of five as well. I thought the chocolate again wasn't too great, although it was a bit more about the crunch in this one. Um yeah. Well, there's, there's anything else about them. Just pretty much un unremarkable, really. You know, very average. It's a three out of five. So I can't really complain about that. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Had, um, and then, yes, um, sort of, well, yeah. Basically, I did the US mint M&Ms as well. And these ones are very surprised. But they're all green as well. Different shades of green. So there's like three or four shades of green in the pack. So all the M&Ms were green. Um, and I thought they were really nice, actually. I gave them a four out of five. And I said they were just a bit like... Um, Almost like tasting after eights, but without the fondant. You know, it just had that sort of same taste to it. Quite a nice, subtle, but mint taste that worked. You know, and I really enjoyed them, actually. So I was very surprised by it, because I'm not a huge mint fan. So I think if you like mints, um, I think these would definitely be up your street. You know, um, mint-flavoured chocolate and things like this, or chocolate with mint or whatever. Then, uh, yeah, no, these ones would re really be up your street. So, yeah. Check these ones out if you can. I'm not, as I say, I don't know if they're still about. I say they were an import at the time. But four out of five, you know, for a mint product for me, is pretty good. So... Yeah, I was quite impressed with those. Yeah, mm, four out of five, I think keep it the same. Yeah. But yeah, and then what else did I do? Yes, I did um, a Nestle Milky Bar. Yeah, this was the regular Milky Bar. It wasn't like the, it was a sort of thin one. You know, you get this, but, you know, quite cheap, 10, 15, well, maybe 20p nowadays. Maybe a bit more, actually, but, you know. <laughs> I gave it a three out of five, actually. I said it was just a bit, you know, no frills, really. Maybe it's the fact that it was just quite thin. I think, because um, the regular Milky Bar, uh, I really like, and I really do enjoy their white chocolate. I so said this was a, Five years ago, so there's a chance, you know, um, yeah, it wasn't quite as, wasn't quite into it as much then, I don't know. I sort of felt like it was just needed something else with it. I think I'm going to raise this one to four out of five, though, I think, because I, I do really like uh, Nestle Milky Bar chocolate. I think it is the nicest white chocolate there is, really, or on a par with um, 
I think the sort of Finland's Panda Bar uh, white chocolate. I think that was really nice as well. Um, yeah, I think it's um, just a bit small, this one, as I say. So I think that's why, you know, I wasn't as keen. I think it just needed something else to be, so sort of lift it up a bit. But nonetheless, really nice. Um, you know, as I say, sort of very milk. Um, Yes, Nestle Milky Bar, really nice. I think in, you know, but they did change the recipe. I think I remember Andrew Winton mentioned they changed the recipe. So there is a chance that that was the cause of it. So that reason why I liked it even more. So I'm not sure. It's a difficult one, but I think, I feel like, you know, I feel like, yeah, in fact, was a bit harsh on it. So, you know, I think a four out of five, probably about right. Just It's just quite the thin bar version of it. So the thicker one, yeah, that's where it's at. And I think that's a five out of five, basically. But yeah. <laughs> And what else do we do? Yes, a couple of um, yeah, a couple of phase ones to finish on. Really, phases milk and white chocolate bar. And I gave this one a two out of five, and I just thought it was very underwhelming. I really like phases products normally, um, you know, really love their white uh, milk chocolate and um, white chocolate's not so bad, but especially like their milk chocolate. But it was just a small bar version. Normally, I, the phase bars are really nice, so the two hundred gram ones. And I think for some reason, just their small bar versions just don't seem to work quite as well um, as their two hundred gram bars. So the small bars being just like a regular. 40 gram bar or whatever um, and this one yeah the white chocolate and the milk chocolate it's mainly white chocolate actually which is interesting so it's like segmented um you know like five segments or six segments or something and they're just sort of like a milk chocolate at the bottom and then a more white chocolate on the top um but i just felt it didn't really taste of anything the white chocolate was a bit underwhelming you couldn't really taste much of the milk chocolate um yeah so i gave it a two out of five and i think that's probably about right really very disappointed in that one i was really expecting a lot from it but yeah i don't know phase let me down on that one so yeah hmm now, phaser again, um, yes, crunchy caramel and sea salt bar. Yes, yeah, so basically the same size bar, a yeah, small bar version. I gave this three and a half out of five, and again, just because it wasn't quite as good as the bigger bars. I don't know what it is. They just, maybe it's the amount of ingredients or whatever, or, you know, the proportions. It just, just, just the smaller bars just don't really seem to work as well as the bigger ones. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, I'm saying in this case, you would have expe I would have expected quite a lot from it, but, you know, if it was a bigger bar version, for sure. But the small one, as I say, I just don't know if it just wasn't as quite jam-packed of ingredients. I'm not sure. Um, so I was a bit, um, yeah, disappointed with it, really. I just didn't quite feel like it worked um, as well as I expected. I don't know. I think it's just, as I say, just the small bar versions. I don't know if it's the size of the segments or the amount of ingredients or whatever, I don't know, but they're just a bit underwhelming for, from Phaser, I don't know why, it's a real shame really, Phaser's Finnish company by the way, really really like their chocolate, but their big 200 gram bars are usually fantastic, but um, I'd say the small bar versions just don't seem to be quite as good, so yeah, this one was just a few and a half out of five, still above average, but it was still disappointing, because I expected more from Phaser as I say, yeah, so there we go, mm. Right, well, there we go, guys. That's all I reviewed uh, one year and five years ago, as well as the, um, yeah, the um, sort of member pro member sort of reviews I did as well, and uh, that special one as well, that bubbly chocolate challenge, or whatever it was called. <laughs> what was it called? Bubbly chocolate. Uh, um, so I'm going to find it the wrong way on the, uh, the list here. Um, I can't see what it is now. Yes, uh, Ultimate Bubbly Chocolate Showdown. There we go. Yeah, so link for that's in the description, as I say. So I might even have put it up here, maybe. Um, but yeah, so check that out as well. Sounds an interesting one, that's for sure. Um, yeah, there's, I think from now, next uh, next week, the live reviews start as well. So uh, I think that basically about the 21st, I think, of November last year as well. I started doing live reviews. So perhaps we are looking at those in the lookbacks as well. So an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Andrew Winter for mentioning that, by the way. Um, yeah, completely, uh, you know... Yeah, it's just time's just gone by so quickly. Crazy, really, isn't it? Crazy. <laughs> okay, guys, so we enjoyed that. As I say, uh, links for all those reviews are in the description. As for all the, um, as are the links for the uh, chocolate showdown as well, bubbly chocolate showdown, and uh, the member reviews as well. Um, so check those out. Yeah, please uh, consider becoming a member. It's a great way to support the channel. Really, really is. Uh, you know, massively, massively appreciated. Um, yeah, leave a comment or free as well. Like my videos if you haven't already. Um, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Have a great day. See you soon. Bye for now. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.